Alrighty, so again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you're dialing in from. And thank you for joining today's webinar on building digital frameworks with data and analytics presented to you by InfoTrust. Um, a few housekeeping items before we jump in. Hopefully you can see my screen and hopefully you can hear my voice clearly. Of course, if there's any technical issues, feel free to post in the chat panel or questions panel within the GoToMeeting, uh, sorry, GoToWebinar uh, interface. As well as if you have any questions throughout this webinar or at the end of the webinar, feel free to post them in there as well. I'll be monitoring that as I go along. Uh, so again, feel free to post in there. This webinar should only last, I think, maybe 30, 40 minutes, depending on uh, how many questions come in and how quickly we go through the content. Of course, we are recording this session, so it will be provided to you after a few days by our marketing team. Um, and should you have any questions after the webinar, please don't hesitate to reach out to InfoTrust on our website or uh, to me directly uh, should you have any follow-ups. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, today's webinar is about building digital frameworks with data and analytics. It's a little bit more on the strategy and conceptual side versus some other events that we have that's more on the technical or how-to uh, end of things, but we wanted to take a step back as we're approaching the end of the year and planning budgets and plans for 2017, what should be the marketing mix and what should be the investments that you make to transform your digital teams or digital practice and really build a sustainable long-term framework. So that's kind of the purpose for the meeting, or sorry, the webinar today. Go through some of the common challenges that we see when we work with clients, uh, some of the common questions to be asked, the approach, the strategy, and really the mindset. Uh, we won't be going into the tactical or technical aspects, but happy to discuss that further on a separate session uh, should anyone wish to do so. So again, feel free to, to let me know. Uh, who am I? In, in case you're uh, curious, my name is Amin Shaki. I'm the Regional Managing Director uh, here in the Middle East, Northern Africa region uh, for InfoTrust. Um, I'm dialing in today from Dubai, so not sure where most of you are dialing in from. Um, but this is InfoTrust's regional or international office. Uh, a little bit about InfoTrust before we dive in, just so everyone uh, can feel good that we know what we're talking about and that we have the right experience. Uh, InfoTrust is a global company based out of Cincinnati, uh, USA. We also have an office here in Dubai that I'm leading. Uh, we're Google Analytics certified partners, GA360 authorized resellers, tag manager partners, and the list goes on. We're very close partners with Google. Also very close partners with Salesforce, uh, among other digital technology providers. And really, we're a web analytics consulting and product development company. Uh, we help organizations on all aspects of analytics, from strategy, planning, uh, implementation, auditing, testing, validation, reporting, uh, analysis, optimization, even trainings. And we do lots of events like this, uh, free webinars at least once a month, if not more. Um, as well as in-person events and trainings uh, throughout the year. And we work with some of the largest companies in the world, so we analyze and support thousands of websites uh, each year and really every day uh, by our team. So uh, the presentation today is not going to be really focused on Google products, but it's with uh, how we approach building digital frameworks or building architectures using data and analytics so that you can have that infrastructure in place to really analyze what tools and marketing activities are most valuable for your business. And that's what we'll get into today. As far as the agenda, uh, we're going to start talking about just building the strategy uh, with data at the core, things to think about. Uh, then we're going to move on to how to leverage and manage the latest, um, yes, most yet most impactful technologies to engage customers or consumers with your digital properties and how we approach this. And then closing off, we're going to say or discuss a little bit about as establishing a digital transformation team, uh, which is a mix of in-house, outsource, working with partners, just what to think about and what that team, you know, ideal team could comprise of based on our experience working with clients um, over the last decade uh, to build some of these digital hub teams, if you will, uh, that are global, multi-brand, but also agile so it can move very quickly. So to start, we're going to just cover the challenge. Uh, put very, very simply, uh, marketing today is very complex. I'm sure many of you that are joining this webinar today uh, share this sentiment with 
how many ways you can engage your different consumers, all the different things that we as digital marketers or, or digital teams need to focus on. Uh, and the question really of what mix of activities and digital tools should you focus on, should you put all of your time, resources, and energy into um, so that you have a really strong strategy and you can connect with your, your consumers uh, the best. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to have a, an easy answer. There's never an easy answer when it comes to what is the ideal marketing mix or uh, activities that you should be focusing on um, as far as a tactical answer. But I do have a very simple uh, way to respond, which is use data to find out. That's our approach. That's always been our approach. As a web an analytics consulting company, we like to be very data-driven and think about, okay, if we need to make a decision, how can we at least feel good about the decision based on the data that, uh, that we have. Um, so that's what we're going to talk through today. Before diving in, though, uh, we always like to take a step back. Whenever we do trainings or start an engagement with an organization um, and they say, okay, we want to track this, this, and this, we want to see this information, and I want to be using the reports tomorrow. Well, we always want to take a step back and ask ourselves, well, what data do you actually need? to make the best decisions about your business, or maybe your department, your individual role, your team, or, or your marketing activities? What are you actually needing to answer, and what data could answer those questions? Um, but not only to answer questions like why or which is better, but what is actually actionable? When the, you have the data or when you want to implement different things, different strategies, will it lead to actual actions and improvements? Uh, that's the thought process that we always say, keep, keep this in mind when you're looking at what tools and technologies you want to use. One, can you track the success of those tools and technologies? Because that's what we always recommend going for. Uh, but also, when you have that data about any tool, technology, or uh, digital asset that you might be considering, will it be able to be improved through the data that you will be collecting about it? And then the last one is a little bit more tactical, probably too deep for, for this conversation, but what's the easiest way to get to this now and in the future as far as the data uh, that you will be setting up? Um, this is more once you get into the implementation side of things, um, but it's good to keep in mind as you're thinking about your marketing mix and all the digital tools and framework you're setting up, what's going to be really easily consumed by your organization? Because there's no point in buying the latest and greatest, most expensive uh, Ferraris that are digital tools or analytics platforms if you're only going to use 1% or less of those tools uh, across your organization. So really, what, what matches your business? Um, we also suggest focusing on outcomes and key results. So obviously, you as a business owner or in, department lead or just in your personal role, you have probably some personal KPIs or things that you need to deliver. Uh, similar when you're building a digital framework, you want to think about what's the outcome uh, that I need to achieve from this uh, framework or the, you know, the mix of activities and assets I'm putting together. What are the outcomes that this framework has to deliver? Um, so here are just some examples. Whenever we start with uh, different organizations, these are some of the common things that come to mind. Um, outcomes are simply growing our consumer base, um, making sure those consumers that we do have or our users are having the best experience possible, driving online sales or for e-commerce, but also getting the execution right, potentially with a small team. So again, digital uh, organizations or organizations that have digital teams, they're growing for sure, but it still requires a little bit of agility. So usually it's smaller teams, more regional or decentralized potentially. So how do you get the execution right with a small team or multiple teams? Um, that's one of the outcomes that is the the goal of building a, a really solid architecture and framework. Um, some of the ways that you can measure this are, are the key results here, and I have a couple pop-ups that are in the way. Um, from developing this framework, you want to make sure you have measurement standards in place. Oftentimes when we work with organizations, they have a lot of things that they want to track or um, measure performance against, but it's not documented. Different people understand it differently within the organization, across different departments, and that really makes it difficult to have a solid structure where people aren't going in every single direction, but everyone's going in one common direction and working together. So measurement standards is, is very, very key, 
And that really ties into a scalable architecture as far as uh, data anal- or sorry, data collection is um, considered, um, or as you're thinking about other tools and technologies, uh, it's good to consider how they might integrate or play well together and really match it again with your team's skill set. So a scalable architecture can mean many things, not just how much load or traffic or um, uh, amount of users can it handle, uh, but also can your team handle sustaining that or, and, and leveraging those different tools. And then uh, with that, creating processes. So documentation is, is key for implementing improvements or leveraging all these different tools and technologies uh, as you build out your framework. Um, rolling it out, aligning between different data sets, and then overall developing a culture of constant improvement. Now, this is my simplified verbiage or way to say whatever you decide to implement, make sure you can measure it. Make sure when you obtain the measurements or the performance that you can act on it, but that it's sustainable. So even if you or your team or your organization, after adopting these new tools and this new framework, can it live on? Is there a legacy? Will the people that come after you and after them be able to live on with uh, the framework and and setup that you uh, configure? So really thinking more long term and building a culture that accepts change and improvements and uh, making sure things can can work uh, throughout time as your business changes and as your teams grow. So we would suggest when you're thinking about what do I need in my digital framework or what, what is that for our organization, thinking about outcomes and key results are very important. When it comes to getting started, um, I took this list of steps from a traditional uh, analytics implementation project that we follow normally. So this is from our experience when we're building analytics architecture. These are the steps that we follow. And I, I thought it was relevant to taking it up a notch to building a digital framework, which encompasses, encompasses a lot more than just analytics, of course. But I think the general steps are very much the same. And I bolded and added some asterisks to the first point here, stakeholder alignment, because throughout our experience, working with dozens and dozens of clients and organizations without some stakeholder alignment or some skin in the game from a champion within the organization, and that might be you joining this webinar or listening to the recording, um, really it's hard to get things done and committed to. So when you're developing your infrastructure and plan and um, what you want to encompass in your digital strategy, having stakeholders aligned will make everything much, much uh, easier. Yes, there's a little bit more pressure because then you're accountable to present and to ensure the success of certain things that you might implement. Um, But overall, getting things through uh, within your organization is is much better when there's some stakeholder alignment or involvement. The other items is pretty standard project management, uh, high level steps to execute anything that you'll be uh, implementing. So once you have what you want to potentially test and what you want to implement within your organization all the different tools or activities, getting this these steps in order uh, is, is how you can roll it out. Now, as far as stakeholder alignment goes, um, oftentimes when we begin working with different marketing teams or organizations to get you know, a stakeholder alignment or buy-in um, from top management, it's usually, okay, well, what do we, what do we say? We need more data because we're blind. You know, that doesn't Uh, actually make us look good from the teams that we're working with. So how do we uh, convince the stakeholders that they should be involved, they should help push this through and get some skin in the game? So um, what we always suggest is just outline the value. Again, because the people that might be joining this webinar or watching this later can come from many different industries or sizes of organizations, uh, it's hard to pinpoint exactly how to show value with analytics for your particular business. But in general, these are some good um, talking points for the value with analytics in order to push through uh, any other digital tool or or building this framework, if you will. So by thinking about measurement and and convincing that your internal teams will have full visibility on the success or not of different tools that you'll be putting together in this digital framework, it'll go a long way to really get the tools bought in and actually implement it within your organization. So some key points of what makes uh, or the value with analytics as an example here is you can see uh, who your consumers are, their interests, their goals and challenges. 
You can identify where your marketing spend investment uh, and advertising is, is best utilized to drive and bring in the best consumers. Um, you can also uncover what content and aspects your products or platforms um, consumers are engaging with and then discover where there are challenges. So this is the value with setting up an analytics or data backed framework because you'll be able to understand um, opportunities and challenges, friction points, but also see the success or not of different tactics that you might be deploying. Now, when it comes to analytics and implementing any kind of strategy behind uh, or with data, it's important to keep in mind that it, it shouldn't be confined to just a single team or you if you're deploying this within your organization. Uh, it's really important to democratize the data and ensure that different groups and different teams within your organization have access to it so that they can understand and, and feel the value with what you're deploying. Um, one example is if you're considering implementing an A-B testing tool, confining that just to the optimization team, including the results or the findings from those tests, um, might be good for that team, uh, but for other members of the organization to understand, well, why are they using that tool when we can be doing something completely different with that same budget or that same time and resources and energy? Uh, by democratizing the data or the results from implementing this tool and the value behind that, per the last uh, slide, everybody in your organization will be on the same page and understand, okay, this is why we're doing this. Um, and again, the stakeholder alignment on that one will make sure that uh, there's a little bit more grease, if you will, for, for that wheel to roll. Now, when it comes to our approach, um, when we're with, working with different organizations, again, we're close partners with Google and we're web analytics consulting company, so we don't do much uh, consulting from a non-analytics perspective or non-analytics implementation. But with this type of project in mind, um, here's just a typical approach that we take, always starting with kind of an audit, assessing where we are, the lay of the land, different teams that are using different tools or what is the activity today, and immediately trying to identify with the data that might be available initially, what is working, what is not, and how can we optimize thinking about the future and answering those business questions that, you know, what data do we need? What data is actionable? Laying this all together, that's how we can build this architecture. Even if you start small, such as with a pilot uh, site, pilot brand, or pilot tool, just to roll it out, see how the process goes for um, identifying, okay, we're either using this tool or we want to use this new tool. How do we make sure that it's a fit for our organization? Well, Let's roll it out slowly, but uh, thinking about how multiple teams, multiple organizations can, can leverage this. Um, from the analytics implementation, technology, technology integration, this is more considering what tools and systems you have in place. Does um, everything work together properly? Because if you have lots of, again, lots of different teams using different tools and processes that don't work together, you're siloing your organization. And from our experience, we see that can really delay and or hurt uh, activities because there's conflicting resources and conflicting um, efforts happening within an organization. Um, from there, ma managing and monitoring the success of different things that you might implement or set up uh, is key. And then tying into the previous slide with data democratization, democratization, um, the best way to do that is from trainings and, and providing insights to the entire organization. Um, so we've seen different organizations do this in different ways, but usually after something is successfully deployed or implemented, lots of communication, lots of exciting announcements to the team of, hey, this was deployed, this is working successfully or not. Let's, um, you know, everybody is, is very aware of that through like an internal newsletter or some kind of internal communication. Um, and sometimes that's in the form of just trainings, like, hey, here's what you can use. Here's how this benefits you specifically uh, in your role or, or uh, department. Now, when we're, what I wanted to show is just a couple screenshots of some of the tools or, or ways that we help put together um, the plan or the measurement strategy as we're working out what a digital uh, framework is required, or in this case, again, from an analytics implementation standpoint, um, gathering requirements and understanding what people need or what data would be actionable and what tools would be actionable and, and valuable. Um, we just document it, 
sometimes in a simple Excel file, uh, or in this case, Google Spreadsheets, just to understand what is the areas that you want to um, work on or what is your role entail? What are the things that you need to be doing and what data would be helpful for that? Or just what is your role uh, require? Uh, documenting that all together in one place across different business units, across different teams, is it begins, you, you start to see some different trends and some different ways that you can um, learn from different teams or different roles and understand what might be most valuable for your entire organization versus just uh, a single person or single department individually. So we usually take all the requirements and uh, needs that different teams or people might have and transfer them or convert them into business goals, KPIs, how we're going to measure them and how it's going to be actionable um, so that we have a, a plan for, okay, if we're going to keep this tool or activity or um, you know part of the whole plan, how are we going to measure and, and act on it in the future? From a project management standpoint, um, we build out rollout plans. Again, in your organization, you might have your own project management system and, and processes, but this is just an example. If you don't have one, again, building out a simple timeline with a list of activities according to you know the approach that I mentioned a few slides ago. That's what we usually do when we're working with different clients and organizations to roll anything out. And then we also just clearly communicate the milestones and checkpoints as we go along the way. So to move on to uh, actually how to leverage and manage uh, the latest yet most impactful technologies, uh, that's the next section here so that, you know, taking on the more high level strategic thought process and, and how to think and approach um, the problem or not really problem, the opportunity of building a really solid framework what are the next steps from, from here? So as I mentioned before, different organizations, different teams, there's not one size fits all. Understanding what tools, technologies, and the, what the mix should be, um, we always say it can only be uncovered through data, testing, analysis. Um, you know, there's some best practices out there for sure, and I'll show later on some case studies of, of things that we've tested, implemented, and deployed um, to see if it works or not. But really, in your in, uh, organization or industry, there are probably some top performers or top um, techniques. And uh, certainly, if you have any questions about uh, media or e-commerce or CPG, those are the industries we focus on mostly. Happy to discuss that maybe separately. Um, on what we see are common tools, technologies, and frameworks that are used. Um, but overall, we always come back to say having data analysis is the best way to identify if something is working or not. Uh, but ideally, when we think of a successful platform, when we paint the picture um, with our clients, uh, it usually looks something like this, uh, where at the core of it, you have data, which in this case is Google Analytics or Google Analytics Premium or 360, uh, but it's around the consumer, it's around the customer. So when we build a successful platform, it's revolving around the customer. Oh, and what kind of touch points can we have with them and how can we track to make sure we see uh, the entire journey along the way? So your marketing teams and uh, different digital teams might be pulling in a lot of new consumers or re-engaging with them uh, with different digital media across different channels. And you have a lot of data like that maybe tracked in uh, analytics. And this is kind of the most straightforward use or application of analytics um, that, that can be done. But then also, uh, you might have additional data sets externally from your digital marketing or media side uh, that you're also uh, implementing or, or testing to better manage your customer engagement. Uh, so if you're thinking digital framework goes beyond just marketing, you know, what's our CRM or uh, backend databases or, you know, just our ERP, et cetera, et cetera, inventory management, whatever. Um, how do those tools ultimately, in our opinion, should be tied back to the consumer. So when we think all of these different technologies or systems and tools that you could be using from a marketing side or back side or what have you, in our opinion, it should always come back to the question, is it gonna help our consumer? Um, or does it tie into your business questions? Like I mentioned before, what are the questions you're trying to answer? Or what are you trying to improve? Do all of these systems connect in a way that drives that ultimate uh, improvement?
And for most, most of the teams that we work with, our organizations, it's around getting the best experience for the customers, getting more customers, and improving the processes to deliver to that customer. Now, when we think about this platform here, um, from a technical perspective, all of these integrations can happen to pass data between the two. And the value there is that there might be some learnings or you might uncover you know, a, a technology or tool in our framework that we thought was really, really valuable. It actually is halter, uh, slowing down or not as impactful to the ultimate result, which is driving more consumer experience that we thought. And the only way to see that is when you connect the data together to see if there's an impact or not. So this successful framework is how we paint the picture, if you will, of um, what it looks like when you have this setup in place with data flowing between different systems. Uh, okay, so I don't think I see any questions. We'll continue on. Um, one thing I just wanted to touch on, this might seem a little bit um, off topic, but I think it's very still very relevant, is when you're thinking about building a digital framework, it's important to take a step back and make sure you have quality implementation. Typically what I mean by that is data quality, measurement quality, because you can set up, and we've seen this happen a lot with our different clients, where lots of things are implemented and things start moving very, very quickly, and there's a framework starting to be built together, but because the data infrastructure is not really solid, it's hard to really identify um, if there's improvements or not with a different setup that's been uh, added in. So I took this slide, to be honest, from um, some of the work we do from a tag management perspective. So we have a lot of clients uh, deploy and manage all of their marketing pixels um, from a deployment standpoint, but also from a performance standpoint. So lots of organizations that we work with have lots of different vendors, lots of different marketing channels, lots of different tools that they use on their website or on their mobile app. And to really manage all that to understand not, or to ensure none of them are um, harmfully hurting your user experience or on the flip side, which ones are actually performing and, and working to drive that consumer experience and um, more engagement. We help manage that whole process, but it comes down to uh, maintaining a high data quality uh, when you're deploying different things because um, there's a lot of impacts if you don't have, or a lot of negative impacts if you don't have really solid infrastructure in place or data quality like uh, re-implementation. Once someone identifies there's an issue, re-implementing over and over different types of uh, tools or technologies um, can be really costly, but also trust. So uh, it's really a tough situation in this day and age when there's so many tools and technologies and ways you can manage your marketing or just your digital teams that if you don't have really solid infrastructure and plan in place from the start, um, one poor implementation, you know, it could you can lose trust with your teams. Now, this might sound contradictory to my previous point of testing or deploying things slowly so you can see how things work. But if you come in saying, you know, we're gonna build this framework, but we wanna do it iteratively and really be data-driven, it gives people a little bit more um, comfort that's like, okay, we're gonna test, see the data, and then if the results are good, then we're gonna go full force on there. Um, and then the last point here is just with downstream systems. So. If one of your tools that you've implemented has not been properly set up to have measurement around it or be very data-driven, it could impact other systems that are also integrated together. Um, and you, you don't want that when you're building an entire framework. If there's one loose cog, it could bring the, not bring the whole thing down, but it can make the whole thing uh, not as solid of an infrastructure as you're looking to get. Now, when we think about just a quick blurb here about our tool taginspector.com. If you're on the marketing side of things, thinking about a framework from a uh, digital marketing perspective, uh, to get that initial audit or understand what tools and techn technologies are on your site currently or on your competitor sites or within your industry, uh, one tool that we use uh, is our own tool, taginspector.com. We built this tool to ensure one, Google Analytics is on every single page of your site from an analytics perspective, but then also what other tools, technologies, and vendors uh, might be deployed on your site or other sites so that you can get a full scope of what the landscape is. So feel free to check out taginspector.com, create a free account, scan your site or your group of sites, and see what's going on, as well as your competitors' sites or uh, similar partners. 
So if you're trying to get an idea of what are the common tools and technologies down in the industry, this is one tool that you can use to, to do that research. Um, all right, so the last section here that we wanted to discuss is just uh, building a digital transformation team. So worked with a number of different clients of all sizes and uh, you know, there's so many different strategies we've seen to a digital transformation team or digital team uh, to really take an organization from being somewhat in digital or not in digital at all to being very, very savvy and, and forward thinking. Um, so these are just some of the tips and techniques that we've seen in the industry, as well as some of the construction of the teams um, ba based on our experience. So if you're a larger organization, multi-site, multi-brand, or even if you're just a single digital property um, and, and a smaller team, it's always good to have centralized and consolidated skills or a, a centralized team in some shape or capacity. Lots of larger organizations have decentralized brands, decentralized markets, but when it comes to the infrastructure and the digital framework, it's good to have a common setup um, because that architecture will help in the long term, one, reduce cost because it's uh, technologies that are reused, implementation that is reused, um, but also just standards so that you can identify what is successful between different teams or markets or uh, individuals and their roles. So an example here from an analytics perspective, if some of your team or some of your organization is using one analytics platform, the other team is using a different one, the data is not going to ever be the same. It's always going to be apples to oranges. And what one team thinks might be successful, another team might not feel quite as strongly because the data is different. And that can cause conflict, delays in improving your customer experience, and ultimately just poor decisions. Uh, potentially. So when we think about standards, we don't think about only a common set of tools, but also a common measurement methodology uh, or mindset as you approach uh, building your framework. Um, and tied to that is when you have a single set of standards, have a single set of tools or framework for your organization, uh, knowledge sharing becomes much, much easier and you can actually move much, much quicker as an organization. You can test faster, optimize faster, find enhancements, and really um, build a, a culture of data-driven um, decision-making because everyone's on the same page, everyone understands what, uh, what you can do there. Uh, as far as the team construction, what we've seen before, again, this particular um, configuration might not work for your organization, um, but when we think about setting up a digital framework, obviously we're very heavy on being data driven and having uh, an analyst or sorry, analytics minded team members. So this is how we construct usually uh, a team to implement an analytics uh, platform as part of the digital framework. Um, but it's similar to how other organizations implement other tools and technologies where usually there's some kind of project manager that um, make sure all the deliverables are organized, the communications in place, their stakeholder alignment, and users understand what's going to be coming to them as well, and really coordinates the whole team. Then usually you have a technical architect of some kind. So maybe a technical analytics architect is a little bit too specific. It's what we usually work with, but it's defining the architecture, understanding and piloting the, the digital capabilities or tools that uh, might need to be rolled out, um, as well as putting together uh, and configuring all these different platforms uh, together. One role that we also like to include, but a lot of organizations don't have or never really thought of this type of role here is an analytics strategist or really just a digital strategist that works closely with the technical architect, project manager, and support engineers, but it's a little bit more forward thinking. So if you're an organization and you work with a lot of different agencies, typically a strategist could be in-house, internal, and might be the same as your champion or as you, um, thinking about what is going to be the best for my organization or my team a few years down the road, or what are the latest and greatest innovations. Even if the team, the project manager, architect, and support engineers cannot implement today, can they build the foundation, the framework to implement in the future? So things like predictive uh, site personalization. So before a user comes to the site, or as soon as they come to the site, if it's the first time there, based on other characteristics and signals, what should we display to them? How can we get to that, that state? That might be something a strategist thinks about and puts together some 
uh, some ideas and does research and understands in the industry where it's going to suggest to the team, hey, we need to build a foundation so that we can get here in the future. So a strategist is pretty important because it's always pushing for innovation. Um, internally at InfoTrust, when we work with different clients and organizations, we usually like to add a strategist in some shape or capacity to all projects, particularly in the beginning, so that we drive it in the, in the right direction according to the business's long-term goals and KPIs that they're trying to achieve. And then, of course, engineers. I mean, we're in a digital world. Digital frameworks is highly technical, so you definitely need engineers to be involved uh, in some shape or capacity. And um, these are just some ways that our support engineers from an analytics implementation perspective have helped organizations in the past as well. Um, our process, uh, I, I kind of mentioned this before, but I wanted to visualize it slightly uh, for any kind of project rollout or, or system design. Uh, we usually start with the audit, understanding the needs of the teams, consolidate priorities based on the documentation that I've shared before, um, put together what the architecture should be, and roll it out, and then do trainings, documentation, support, um, and, and various uh, ongoing monitoring or insights. And we suggest repeating a, a process that works for you um, regularly. So instead of setting it, everything up once and then hoping it's good for the uh, for the long term, uh, building the foundation for long term is important, but reviewing it uh, every so often is is important as well. I say semi annually just because the organizations we work with are so large sometimes that they can't t pivot uh, more often than semi annually. But ideally, repeating this process more frequently or reviewing the different tools and how they're working regularly is is really the key here. This is more like an, when you're looking overall at your entire framework, entire setup. We, re we suggest reviewing it uh, at least twice a year when you're looking at all of the tools together. Individual tools you should be looking at regularly um, uh, from an optimization standpoint. So uh, to close, I wanted to repeat again here this slide of how to get started and highlighting the stakeholder alignment here. And I mentioned before that the best way to get stakeholder alignment or really team involvement and uh, excitement with any kind of digital framework you might be putting together is through case studies. That's what our experience has um, taught us is showing examples of other organizations leading uh, brands that are really pushing the edge and developing or deploying something that drove significant improvement and their organization is, is key here. So I wanted to show just an example uh, of an organization we worked with uh, Mums World here that you know we started with speaking to the stakeholders, really the owner of the company. What are your goals? I mean, are you using analytics? What's your uh, approach? What are your different tools and te technologies? And what we learned when working with Mums World is that um, their goals were simple, just like many other e-commerce sites: increase online sales, lower the cost of acquisition, make sure we have high um, return on ad spend, and really we build a, a sense of loyalty with our customers. They already had very, very loyal customers in general because it's uh, a website that sells um, baby and, and child products. So as a baby is born and grows up, this site becomes kind of the mother's uh, tool of choice for different toys and resources and different things for um, the children as they grow. But really getting more sales, getting them to come more frequently and have this be an everyday tool was, was the goal. And, um, you know, when we came in, we assessed everything that was uh, set up, how their different tools worked, and we realized that their inventory system didn't work very well with their website. I mean, it was obviously connected because it's an e-commerce site, but when products would go out of stock, it would take days, sometimes weeks, for anyone to notice and restock, um, as well as you know, lots of engagement, lots of interactions were um, not tracked at all. There was no data behind it, but there was a lot of teams just uh, suggesting that you know, we should implement this, we should change the content in this way because this is how our competitors do it, et cetera. But there was no data-backed decision-making. So we came in, we implemented a lot of integrations, we improved their inventory management connected to the website, and also just tracked uh, a lot of different user interactions so we can get visibility and understand, okay, if you're going to deploy something new, like a new tool or new piece of content or anything like that on the site, let's see if it's going to be successful or not. Um, and through our integration, through our implementation and updating how everything is set up, we saw an increase across the board 
and all top metrics and KPIs that we help them put together. So e-commerce conversion rate, total purchases, uh, return from advertising spend was all an improvement. And we were able to have their top channels or top spending advertising so, uh, sources have a 300% return on advertising spend. For every dollar invested, they got $3 back for those top channels. Um, and this allowed a lot of flexibility for them to test um, you know, a new tool, a new uh, channel or a new resource. Let's see how that works because we're really confident we can measure against that and see if it's going to be successful or not to keep long term as part of our digital framework. So pretty, pretty cool case study and, and really a compelling story for uh, us and for them to continue investing in digital uh, and in uh, you know, analytics and trying new things for sure. So um, let me just check if there's any questions. I don't see any have come in, but really this is the, the bulk of the, the webinar. Uh, I've been talking pretty much nonstop, but uh, you know, I, I, at the end of the day, when we work with different organizations, understanding their KPIs and what they're trying to do is uh, through data and data setup is the best way to build a digital framework. So um, at this point, I'm going to uh, stick around and, and end the webinar just uh, waiting for any questions that might come in. Um, I guess I do want to have one shameless plug. Feel free to sign up for any of our upcoming events uh, on our website. We have several events that are coming up, particularly around customer centricity and focusing on uh, analyzing your consumer's behavior online, how to improve that. So I encourage everyone to check out our website, uh, sign up for our upcoming events. Um, but also thank you so much for joining. And uh, with that, I'll stick around for a few minutes for questions. And uh, uh, thanks so much for joining. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording just for the webinar, but I will stick around a few more minutes.